The world is full of twists and turns. If you're an entrepreneur, those twists and turns can lead to many opportunities. Following trends and keeping up with everything that's going on in the environment can seem overwhelming at times, though. There are some basic thoughts that can impact on the long-term success of your business. And to discuss ways to ensure your business is a success, I'm joined by world-renowned human behavior specialist, author, entrepreneur, and teacher, Dr. John Demartini. Welcome back again for another <laughs> discussion on this aspect of entrepreneurship, how yes. to uh, ensure that your business is successful. What would you say, John, would be a strong foundation to ensure this longevity of success? Well, without a doubt, stress is the inability to adapt to a changing environment. So the ability to adapt is an essential component of any business. If, if I look back over the last, say, 36 years of my business, Without a doubt, there's been a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And if I had not kept up with the changes and foresee some of them or have people help me see those, I might have had even more challenges along the way. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to adapt. Now that leads me to how do you deal with change management? How do you deal with managing change? Because mm -hmm. that's what it's about. And there, there's, there's two make ba basic things about a business. One is you're in business for the sake of serving people with a product, service, or idea and making a profit. And you gotta be able to make a profit with the money that you start the business with, more than what you could put your money into without having to do anything and make more. So if you're not making, if you could put your money into a savings account and get 6%, and you can't make 6% in your own business, better to put it in a savings account. Sure. But if you have a, a plan and you have a strategy mm -hmm. to serve people that's gonna earn you way more than that, it's wiser to be in business. Yeah. Because you're gonna have more return on your investment. Yeah. So you have to be able to adapt because you have to be able to deal with a changing society's values. The society's constantly changing. The needs are changing. So if you're not keeping up with that, you're gonna, you're gonna falter. If you're not green, you're growing. And growing, you're gonna rot, rot and rot. So what that takes is, is engagement. And there's a term in, called engagement. And when people are fully engaged in their business and they do something that they love doing, because nobody goes to work for the sake of a company. They go to work to fulfill what they value. Mm -hmm. If they can see that their values are being met in the job duties they do each day at work, they have resilience and adaptability and they can change microscopic changes on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If they feel unengaged, uninspired, they go into a more primitive part of the brain and they get more rigid and they, get, they have to wait for cataclysmic events to occur to a change. Those individuals that get rigid and get pig-headed and they, 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 I'm right, those people usually end up having major crisis in the business. So you have to be willing to be engaged. That's why making sure you meet people's needs, you get feedback that you're making a difference, and making sure that you're doing something that's really valuable to you so you can't wait to get up in the morning and do it, mm -hmm. allows you to stay in that higher advanced area of the brain where you have the most resilience and adaptability. Because if you're not willing to change and you're not caring about finding out what people need, you're probably gonna run into big snags and short-lived business. A lot of business don't make more than five to 15 years. They don't make yeah. it because they're not adapting to change. They think what worked in the past is gonna to continue to work and they're not adapting. Mm -hmm. um, John, how important is it to have a business plan? There are some people who say this is crucial. You need to have a business plan that also allows for that flexibility and, and taking into account those factors of change. There are others who say just throw away the business plan because life is so complex, you need to just, you need to be able to find your way through those twists and turns. And I've actually met entrepreneurs, successful ones, who say, throw away those business plan. It was the banks who actually created this idea that you need to have a business plan so that you can show us um, how you intend running your business so that we can give you some financial aid or some financial assistance. Well, I understand. What is the purpose of it yeah, from your perspective? Yeah, I both perspectives. Yeah. Uh, I would disagree with the idea that throw away your plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the plan, if you're throwing it away, that means the plan wasn't a real plan. That's what it boils down to. You're creating a fantasy, not a real plan. A grounded plan can be to your advantage. Foresight in business is wiser than hindsight. Mm -hmm. Learning through trial and error is not as effective as having mentorships, guidance, and planning. There's no doubt about it. Your executive center is far wiser than your primitive part of the brain, which is just telonomic, which is just living by trial and error, impulses and instincts. You need that but you don't want to do everything by that. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have an impulse and a fantasy about, oh, this is gonna work. And they didn't think, is there even a market for it? Uh, did you think of the cost? Uh, is, is, do you even have the funds to get it started? 
are you going to run out of cash before you even get the six months into place? Mm -hmm. So basic for planning to me is essential. Mm -hmm. And a real plan doesn't need to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. It's fantasy plans that you kind of put together that, to meet the bank's needs, but not necessarily what the customer needs. Yeah. See, getting money from a bank is different than getting service to, across to a customer. Mm -hmm. and, and you can write up something that's you know, great for the bank and get your money, but if you still don't have something that serves a customer, that money's gonna be debt, not gonna sure. be a return on investment. So I would disagree with the idea that you, you don't need some planning. You may not have a formal plan. You may not have one that matches the bank's needs, but the rigor of those responsibilities do assist people. But some people are more uh, people-oriented, not analytical-oriented. Yeah. And so those are the people that they get burned out trying to put that de detail together. together. But if you go and run a business without those details and out those numbers, you'll eventually end up problems. So you need both. You need a visionary that's out there you know, a proctor and a gamble. You need a visionary and you need a detailed person. Like if you're building a house, you need to have a plan yeah. to build that house. I, I would not want to build the Brooklyn <laughs> Bridge without a plan. Sure thing, John. Yeah, I don't know if you know the, the, the bit of a story on that. John Rebling, who had a vision of building this bridge across the, the Brooklyn to Brooklyn, had a dream. Everybody laughed at it, thought it's crazy. He put together a massive plan, an amazing plan. Eventually got some funder and eventually got a bank online, eventually got some architects and eventually got this. And he put it, this thing together and he started on this. And his son, um, uh, Augustus Redwig, was in, engaged in it. And he knew the plan. But there was an accident that came that they didn't anticipate. And John got killed and Augustus got injured. And he was in the hospital. But he had the plan in his head. And so he created, he could only move his finger and he started to create with his finger a code on how to communicate what was in his head to his wife and to the foreman who was running the building. Mm -hmm. And literally for a number of years, he sat in a bed in the hospital room with his finger communicating through a code on how to create that bridge. It's an amazing story. Yeah, it sounds so, amazing. But if he had not had a plan in his mind and could see it in his mind, and, and he, he had no feedback, he had to do it in his mind, that would never have been the Brooklyn Bridge. So I can't imagine building anything that's massive and great. It's a great edifice without a plan. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, my, my experience, when I went and opened up my business, the value of the business plan for the bank was also valuable to me because it made me ask questions that I didn't know, didn't think of, and allowed me to make sure that I thought of those things that were gonna be essential. Uh, what do the, the clients really need? And what's my real cost? Because I am absolutely certain if I would have started that business without that, I'd run out of capital. So I, w I got real about what my capital needs are to start that business. And I also made sure that I didn't sit there and just hope and pray that somebody was gonna come in to see me. I went out assertively to network and market and to do the things that it took because I'd done that plan. Mm -hmm. So foresight is wiser than hindsight, in my opinion. But now, there's lots of false plans and there's fantasies. And I've seen people do it. Mm -hmm. They've given it to me and I look at that and I go, that's not a complete plan. There's, there's holes all through that. Those sauce, but get a real plan that's really thinking things through. You're, you're going to have a clear vision of what you're going to do and you know how you're going to do it. Sure. John, what would you say are some of the other important elements for an entrepreneur to consider to ensure the longevity of his business? Well, he has to listen as much as speak, as they say. You got to listen to the customer. You got to listen to the employees. You got to listen to the stats, mm -hmm. the data that you're gathering. And if you're not metricing, and, and keeping metrics of what you're doing, you don't have anything to give you feedback. And then you have to wait for crisis to give you the feedback. Better to have a little bit of metric on a daily basis. I kept metrics of every, every part of the business when I first started my business. I've delegated that now. But when I started, I kept metrics on it. And I was able to foresee things that were going off before there was a crisis by having those metrics. If you really care about something, you want to metric it. I still do it today and all my goals are still metric today. So if I say I want to do a thousand radio interviews or TV interviews mm -hmm. for the year or whatever, I keep records of every show on there and make sure that I'm getting it and how many people are reaching so to get the goal. How many interviews have you done uh, today? This, this year, it's 91 already this year, wow. interviews. So uh, if, I go and I, if I go and look at what I'm doing, I'm, um, I'm keeping records of those things because that lets you know that it's really seriously important to you. And you, do you keep metrics on the return of the investment, the time that you're giving to yes. interviews every, every single yeah, encounter? Yeah, I look at what well? we actually get out of it because we... Because we have to use your time. Your life is your time. And you have to look at how you're using your time. Because people that don't value their time don't value their life. Mm -hmm. And so you want to look at what you're, what you're accomplishing in, in, the, 
in the outcome as best you can. I mean, some is not easy to find out, but it's a numbers game. We, we look at how many people we go and do the media, and then we look at how many people come on social media, and we look at how many people then go buy products, and how many people are interested in webinars. We try to keep as much metric as we can to guide our path. And I think that having those metrics uh, along the way are very valuable. You may not be, as the entrepreneur, the visionary, not wanting to get you all that detail, but you better have that delegated and give you feedback so you can go in the direction. What does customer service mean to you? I mean, you travel around the globe, you touch millions of lives, and you want people to come back to you. Well, if nobody comes back, you're out of business. <laughs> you know, so if you got more people going out the bucket than you got coming into the bucket. You come across as the, as the businessman or the type of person, uh, through my interactions, as someone who does not take anything for granted. Well, uh, I, I, I think I've delegated, I've surrounded myself with people who are attending to the details that need to be done. And if I didn't have them, I'd be having to be burdened by some of those responsibilities. But I've gradually built a team. I think Colin said it takes 25 years to have an overnight success. You gradually build up a team of people that are able to do the things that are essential, that are not your priorities, but are priorities to the business. And you have to look at where your strengths are. Mine is research and writing, traveling and teaching. Mine's not doing those things anymore. But I, I delegate those and put the people in there that love doing that so I can get on and do what I do best. Because if I'm not out exposing myself and meeting people and, and sharing and teaching and doing the media and everything else, I'm not expanding the network. So if I was doing nothing but do, do due diligence only and not having somebody do that for me, I wouldn't grow the business because I'd be trapped doing those things that are not necessarily where my expertise is, my core competence. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out what your, what your values lead as a core competence. Ricardo in economy, in Ricardo's law, he showed that every society, every culture, every town, every individual has a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. And it's always based on what they value most, where they're strongest. And it may be a resource. If it's a country, it's what is the greatest resource? It may be minerals, like in South Africa. It may be farmland, in, like in Idaho. It, it, you know, it may be a whole different uh, industry where there's mountains and water, maybe electricity. But every city and every town and every group has a competitive advantage. Not overlooking that, but discovering that and finding out where you excel is what allows you to competitive advantage. And, and prioritizing things in your competitive advantage is your, is your key. And sure. finding it out. In the Book of Wealth by Hubert Hell Bancroft, that was one of the keys that stood out in that that, that each country that found its competitive advantage resource and concentrate on it were able to compete and become leaders in their industry. John, what would you say are some of the factors that impacts on the profitability of small businesses in particular? Because I, I'm, what, an important factor um, to ensure longevity is to be profitable. Yes. What are some of the common mistakes small businesses make that impacts on their profitability without even them realizing it when it comes down to costing, et cetera, I managing love finances. I love this question. Uh, there's, a, there's a principle in physics that um, there's a natural tendency, Clausius in 1859 created this law that shows that there's a tendency in the, in the universe to go from order to disorder. And there's, and Sher, uh, Erwin Schrodinger, who wrote a book called What is Life, 1944, said there's a tendency to go from disorder to order one is called death physics, one is called life physics. Life physics is essential for an organization to evolve. Mm -hmm. Death physics is automatically counterbalancing it. So if you're not organizing, you're not prioritizing, and you're not focusing on what it is that inspires you and that gives you life, you're automatically undergoing entropy. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to money, if you don't put money and sort it and organize exactly where every one of the dollars is gonna go, savings, investments, taxes, depreciation, vacation, education, uh, uh, portions for marketing, portions for this. If it's not allocated and organized and structured, entropy will take it over and you'll have unexpected bills and there'll be nothing to do those things. John, thank you so much. Always appreciate your time and your invaluable contribution to all of our topics in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you, appreciate it again.